Hello, I'm Joe. And I'm Owen. We're from Hot Chip, and you're watching Billboard.com. We, for the first time on this record, worked in like a small studio in West London. In the kind of history of our group, we've mostly recorded everything kind of in our bedrooms, you know, in my bedroom or Alexis's or... We haven't, we haven't worked in kind of outside studios that much. I think because we'd kind of, uh, we stopped touring, kind of went off and did kind of a lot of different other projects, um, you know, side projects and kind of just other things kind of took a break from Hot Chip for a little while and then coming back together just felt really good for, for all of us, I think. We kind of like realized the nice things about working together and just kind of had a good time making the record. First song on our record is Motion Sickness. Uh, it's one of the songs that I'm kind of most uh, proud of and pleased with. I feel like it has a kind of vitality to it. It kind of has a, a feeling of liveness and the kind of excitement, I think. Uh, I like the way it kind of develops slowly over the first couple of minutes to a kind of crescendo. It kind of feels, feels like it builds nicely um, and over a long period. It, like quite early on in the process of making the record, we started to think of it as possibly being like a good opening track for that reason, like it kind of coalesces slowly, so it's kind of an introduction to the album in a, in a good way, I think. The starting point for that, it was kind of inspired by the, the work of like Sheik, uh, Nile Rogers and Bernard Edwards, who I just really think are some of the best producers uh, and musicians kind of that have ever worked in kind of pop and dance music. And just really, really, really inspiring and incredible. Yeah, I did a bit of singing on that as well. It's the yeah. first time I've sung in a thing. So yeah. it was, well, it was one take, wasn't it? Yeah, it's perfect. Don't Deny Your Heart. Deny your heart. Um, we did some early sessions for it, like at, at my house. Owen came round, Alexis came round. We, uh, we were listening to things like I Want to Be Your Lover by Prince, um, you know, just, that's, you know, one of the best pop songs ever, I guess. We were thinking of trying to, you know, trying to make pop music with that kind of, like, effervescent kind of feeling. We worked really hard on the writing of that song. It kind of developed quite slowly, and we, and we tried different arrangements, putting different sections in different places, writing bits and then rewriting them. It took a while to, like, reach the final kind of version, but, I feel pleased that we kind of persevered with it, you know, I think it ends up being good. It's a song that's kind of written by Alexis. Um, great song, I think, and has a really, really lovely chorus and the sentiment of it's very nice. I think we were thinking about great kind of modern R&B like R. Kelly, who's, you know, he's clearly a genius. I think, yeah, it's our, maybe our first use of silence. But this, this might be the first instance of silence. Well, apart from the gaps between the songs, which we <laughs> obviously put in. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of a little, little silent moment in there, isn't there? Mm, yeah. Yeah, and, we, and we, we tried to kind of use the kind of techniques that you'd hear on kind of, you know, proper kind of slow jams. That features uh, my baby girl, who's like, she didn't know she was featuring. <laughs> I recorded her making lots of kind of happy noises, like my, my wife was making her laugh and stuff, and um, recorded that. And that's a good sound in itself, but we kind of sampled it and kind of made a kind of melody out of it, which uh, fits because the track is about, um, about the fact that like, you know, as you get older, you have like responsibilities that mean you're, you know, in some ways you're not entirely free, like you have responsibilities to people, but that those responsibilities are really essential to you, like they, they make you feel good. Night and day, um, wanted to make something that was just kind of, kind of hopefully like irresistible and kind of good in a kind of dancey way. Um, and also something that's kind of dark, like discordant, 
we got um, our friend Leo, uh, Leo Taylor, to play drums on it. But we kind of basically we, we, we was, he was playing on another track, and we just got him to do the most bonkers sort of fills we could. And um, yeah, we, you know, we were kind of basically laughing about how, how good they were. Basically, so it was quite a fun thing. And then we kind of put them in slightly odd places, like you know, we, we might not quite expect them. Uh, well, flutes started with the the sound that you hear right at the beginning of the track, which is some Buddhist monks chanting, mm. and it's you had to hire a whole bunch of monks. <laughs> I don't come cheap. Um, no, it was an old record, wasn't it? It was an old record that I had of Buddhist drums, bells, and chants. It's called it has great samples on it, and so we sampled these monks doing like a kind of, I guess, uh, um, well, like kind of we know now it's kind of a really ancient Buddhist chant, but I just thought that the rhythm was, it sounded really interesting. Now There Is Nothing is uh, entirely like written by Alexis and mostly kind of produced by him as well. In terms of just kind of songwriting like as a craft, I think it's really, really impressive. Like it's. He uses quite quite unusual kind of melodies and chords, and has these kind of uh, tempo changes, um, but manages to make it all. It still still feels very kind of natural and good, I think. What well, ends of the earth is one of the first songs written for the record. Uh, it's really kind of musically kind of inspired by classic house things like Inner City, Good Life, or Big Fun, or. <clears throat> those kinds of things where I have these great kind of rhythmic uh, like synth kind of stabs and great kind of housey drums and those things combined with like really good kind of songwriting uh, that was that was the kind of things that we were aiming for I think uh, let me be him started for me I was kind of thinking about kind of the lyric kind of pop records um, you know, where, which can be quite like long, quite epic, quite kind of slightly kind of hippie sounding or kind of new agey sounding, you know. So Let Me Be Him has at one point the sound of like bird song and it has kind of slide guitar bit at the end of the track. And it also has a, a recording made in like a kind of kid's playground. I wanted it to have a kind of like childlike kind of quality in some ways, a kind of to kind of feature field recordings uh, as well as being this kind of dancey thing. I've always, been your love. always Been Your Love is a song written by Alexis. Um, I think quite early on in the process of making the records. Also has really good live strings played by uh, two friends of ours that we went to school with who are in a great string uh, duo called Geese. They've played on a lot of our records. Mm. Uh, kind of, th I think every album they've added strings to, one way or another. So it was great to have them back again. There were a couple of tracks that didn't make it onto the record that were initially we were really wanting to to be on the record, but in the end decided that we didn't want to bore people. No. <laughs> didn't, want the, didn't want the record to be so long that you kind of end up skipping. Yeah, no skippers. So that's, that's our that's our essential kind of goal for an album, no skippers. Yeah.